Hello. Today we're going to discuss Edward Munch and the style of Expressionism. Munch was a painter in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and his most famous painting is known as The Scream. You have probably seen this image because it's pretty ubiquitous across society. It's seen on t-shirts, it's seen in popular media. It was the inspiration for many different movies and many other art styles, including the physicality of the screaming scenes in Home Alone and the basis of the character in this movie, The Scream. Before we move on in our talk about Edward Munch, I would like you to read an article about Edward Munch and his use of color and how the people of the day often thought of color as an interpretation of one's personality and uh, kind of a way of looking deep inside someone's soul. So read the article and we'll talk afterwards. Okay, hopefully you've read the article and it talked about the Theosophists um, and their interpretation of color and how Monk used color. So in their talk, they talked about the use of yellow in this image as being a color that represents uh, wisdom and intelligence of the older man. And in this image, you see the hair of the woman wrapping around the face of the man. It's the image of the man is probably a self-portrait of Monk himself. And the colors of orange would represent sensuality, whereas the browns would represent mistrust. And here I would like you to look at and try to do your own interpretation of the color. Think about what colors are used here, talk about it uh, with somebody, and discuss um, the meanings of the different colors here. The article talks about the meaning of the orange and maybe some of the brown tones. But what about the blue tones? What about the big swath of white in the upper upper left-hand corner, or the red in the right-hand corner. What might you interpret those colors to mean as an interpretation of this image? So these images, along with the scream and images like it, are a form of expressionism. That's a style of painting that came around during the turn of the 20th century, and it was primarily focusing on expression of ideas and emotions and expressing your inner self through art in a way that um, we kind of alter the realistic rendering of an image in a way that enhances its expression. So use color, use altered shapes and images to to make an image feel even more expressive. So let's look at a couple and let's talk about in what ways they've altered or changed things in order to make it more like expressionism. So let's just start here with the screen. We notice here, it, this is not a realistic sunset of, of people walking down a pier. Um, this image, or a boardwalk, this image, the lines are specifically wavy, it's very scratchily drawn, you know, the, the angles and curves of the body give an unsettling feeling. The color, the bright color reds, have their own uh, emotional impact. What do you think that impact might be? Is it anger? Is it fear? Is it excitement? What do you think? What do you think it could be? Here's another image. Um, again, really look at the colors. This one's a little bit more realistically drawn, but it's definitely not not photorealistic by any means whatsoever. So, look at not just the color. But look at the texture and the form, forming almost disformation of the hands and the way the, the wrinkles and the clothing are and the look on his face. How is that? What types of emotions do you think that expresses? Here's another image. Look at the deformity of the woman's arm as she embraces the, the other character in the, in the, in the image. Look at how the pale skin of the woman's legs almost disappears into the white fabric of the background. Notice the lack of color. What might that express? Many expressionist works are almost like telling a story. Something is happening here. Look at the woman. Look at her expression, how she's holding her arms. 
um, the look on her face, the way the hair drips over her shoulders and kind of blends into the dirt and, and grass in the background. Look at the way the figure in the foreground um, is, and uses all black and is covering their head with their hand. What emotion might that express? What do you think could have happened in this story that would create such feelings? In this image, there's a lot happening here. There's three characters, all painted with expression, using color to try to interpret personality and soul, um, not just in the figures, but also in the background, using lots of greens surrounding little pops of red for flowers or fruit or whatever you think it might mean. Is this a reference to Adam and Eve? Perhaps. Is this some other reference? Perhaps. One who knows Monk might recognize the image of the character in the foreground who's staring back at us as very similar to Monk's face himself. Is it a self-portrait? Perhaps. You may have noticed the theme of the hands on the head in many different ways. The emotions, even with the hands on the head, are slightly different. In the scream, it has a more feel fearful appearance. In the previous one, it has a, something that's more shocking. In this one, it's almost like the figure is covering her ears, like she doesn't want to hear something, doesn't want to know the truth of something. The image of the background has a woman appearing to lie in a bed, but she's faded. She uses blue and very cool, cold colors. Is she sick? Is she dying? Is she fading away? And what is the relationship between the woman in the bed and the girl with her hands on her, on her ears? What is that girl feeling and why? And what is it about how Monk paints it that lets you know that those feelings are present? So what I would like to do is I would like, I would like you to practice drawing with expression. It seems like it would be easy to draw an emotion, but emotion is intangible. You can't see uh, an emotion. You can only feel an emotion. So we're going to practice drawing some emotions. I'm going to give you four emotions. I would like you to spend about two minutes drawing each one as I go through them. And there is one rule, however. It's very easy. If I were to say, tell you to draw the emotion of happiness, it's very quick and easy for the mind to go to a face that looks happy, or maybe even a stylized happy face with two dots and a smile. So my challenge is for you to draw in a picture that expresses these emotions. I'll give you four, but you are not allowed to draw any faces. I'd like to see you use color. You can use pastels, oil pastels or soft pastels. And I'd like you to see you use distortion of image or just shape of line or texture, any way you can to, to project an image of that emotion. So the first emotion I would like you to draw is excitement. Spend two minutes drawing excitement. Go ahead and pause the video. The second one I would like you to draw is joy. What does joy look like? And remember, you're not allowed to draw a face. Pause the video and draw for two minutes. The third emotion I want you to capture is loneliness. What does it like, feel like, and look like to feel like you're alone? Pause the video and draw for two minutes. The last emotion I'd like you to draw is anger. What does anger look like? Draw for two minutes. Okay, let's talk about your project. Your project will be done on a 12 by 18 sheet of paper. You'll be using oil pastels. And what I want you to do is create your own version of the scream. I want you to create a screaming character that's full of emotion and uses expressionism to express that emotion beyond a realistic drawing. If you draw a realistic character that looks like they're screaming, you are not doing this project correctly. Now, the person screaming can scream for many different reasons. Here are some examples from previous years. You can scream because you're excited. You can scream because you're angry. You can scream because you're afraid. You can scream because you're frustrated. There are many, many different reasons on how you can interpret the Scream project. 
after you create your screaming character, you need to fill your background with images of things that make you want to scream and try to draw those expressively as well. This is one of my favorites because it is so expressive. The giant red mouth that fills up a large portion of the, of the paper and really draws the eye to it. And then those, those kind of blank eyes that really are, are expressing frustration with schoolwork, with um, things that make her afraid. It's a very well done and very expressive painting. I love this one because of how unusual it is. They chose to draw the character kind of hanging from the top of the picture. They, they used a very rectangular square mouth. What does that, and it's very, very elongated, what does that say about the expression here? And the cracks on the skin of the character, also very expressive. So your scream project. You are, to create a screaming character, I would like it to be big and the character should be the focus of the image. I need to do draw and color like the expressions, so not realistic, not realistic colors, not realistic lines. Use texture, use color, use line and shape and form to express something about yourself. Fill the background with images of things that make you want to scream. I say make you want to scream because most of us don't actually scream out loud about things when we're angry or we're sad or we're fearful, but we may want to scream inside. And those are the things that I want you to try to focus on and think about for this project. Use good pastel technique. Um, I want you to layer pastels, blend pastels. Use things like Sgraffito. Sgraffito is where you take layers of pastels on top of, so you layer one color on top of another and you use scratching techniques to scratch through the colors to reveal colors that are underneath. Use lots of pastels and I want the whole paper covered so that you can almost see none of the paper showing through when you're done. Finally, be creative and be original. So I'd like you to take some notes about Edward Monk. Um, these are things I'd like you to know, and uh, you might be testing on it at the end of the quarter. First one is Edward Monk. Who was he? He was a painter from Norway. He painted in the Expressionist style, and his most famous work is The Scream, painted in 1893. Now saying he's an Expressionist means we should define Expressionism. Expressionism is a style of painting where natural images are distorted and colors are altered to enhance the expression of emotions. I should say that expressionism is also can be done with drawing or sculpting or many other different artistic styles. So I wish you luck on your project and um, do the best that you can.